Hello everyone and welcome to WWE Discussion. I'm your host, the WWE DJ Stucky Doug. In today's episode, I'm going to be discussing Friday Night SmackDown 2 Nice 2023 episode. So, this episode of Friday Night SmackDown had one big question looming over it, and that is whose side is Jay Uso on? Also, on the show, you had some more uh, Money in the Bank qualified matches. Uh, Bailey, Eel Sky, Butch, and Santos Escobar would all qualify for their respective ladder matches. Unfortunately, well, those matches got shorter for time, and as a result, they were, well, they underperformed in terms of quality. Um, and also, Asuka got a new title. And with that, we'll go ahead and get right to the action. Starting with uh, Jay Uso interrupting Solo Sokoa and Paul Heyman. So, would Jay Uso fall in line? We joined the bloodline. That was a big question in during Friday's show, and the right hand man opted to keep the audience guessing, but not before taking up the, spe- the special counsel uh, um, of the bloodline up on he- on the um, on, on a shot at Austin Theory for the United States Championship. The segment ended on a cliffhanger with Uso not giving an answer as to where he stands. Will he dethrone the theory? Spoiler alert, he did not. Uh, what awaits him if he does not? Well, we'll find out next week. Probably Roman Reigns does return next week. What, whose side does he choose? Jimmy's or the Bloodlines? Well, he didn't answer that question this week. And that will also be probably, but it probably will be answered next week along with the uh, previous question. Uh, so yes, those are the questions that were presented by this segment. And they certainly added more stakes to the main event of this show. So good stuff from all involved and a great way to start the show. And the you know, men's Money in the Bank uh, qualifier, Santos Escobar versus Mustafa Ali, and a fun, energetic match that fans invested based on the raw athleticism on display from the competitors. A great way to kick off the in ring portion of the next show. While there is an argument for Ali to score the victory, Escobar has had more momentum his way in terms of storytelling this year. Um, so I think it was ultimately the right choice was for him to uh, go over in this one. So Escobar is now in the latter match. Uh, solid addition to that match. <coughs> you have a United States Championship match that goes up the show. Jey Uso vs. Austin Theory. Jey was left in a state of uncertainty to close out the show. Not unsure of who he could trust or where he could pledge his allegiance. Uh, setting up what is likely to be a significant segment uh, next week in the Bloodline Saga. The next chapter is already looking pretty appetizing. Like the opening segment, uh, at, like the opening segment, this provided fans with another cliffhanger that creates anticipation for what is to come next week. Everything involving Heyman, the Usos, and Solo go on this broadcast was master storytelling. It proved that Roman Reigns doesn't need to be on television every single week to uh, continue <coughs> to tell effective stories uh, or continue to add great chapters to this saga. The match between Uso and Theory, solid match, um, yeah, solid match overall. Uh, if Jay Uso does end up turning on Roman Reigns, some people might think it's a given. I don't think it's a given, but uh, if he does, WWE will have created another top guy in Jay Uso. So the Bloodline stuff was great, as has been the case for the last two or three years at this point, but the rest of Friday's show ended up suffering from being jam-packed with no real opportunity to focus enough time on any one match or segment for it to mean anything. Um, and this is a question I did raise on Twitter, which is, you know, the Bloodline stuff is great, as I just mentioned, but is it too much to ask to, you know, not have it take up so much time on Friday Night Smackdown? Can we not just dedicate time to... Um, can we not just dedicate some more time and make sure matches are getting decent time? You know, the qualifying matches ended up being a waste of time and energy. Um, and they were ultimately inconsequential to the storyline within. You think about Corbin versus Bush. Corbin got way too wrapped up of his NXT storyline, which it's nice that that's being featured on SmackDown, but it shouldn't be taking precedence over the match that's happening in the ring. Um... And then, you know, Bailey's match was too short, and ultimately AJ Styles is kind of a distraction at ringside, not in terms of interference, but just the focus seemed to be shifted too much on him. And then after the match, he cut away right to him and Karrion Cross because they're resuming their feud, uh, and AJ Styles got a case of Scarlet Fever. Um, 
and then the match with Eos Sky and Shotzi that was also cut short and Bailey's interference kind of ruined that match too so ultimately the bloodline stuff kind of took up a bit too much time everything else kind of suffered for it and um yeah I got shorted for time affecting the quality um and then there was the segment between Asuka and Flair so Asuka gets um a new title belt. She's the women's champion. Not entirely sure what it's supposed to mean for Rhea Ripley and her title reign as well too. But I'm sure if WWE has an answer for Asuka, they got an answer for Ripley as well. But nonetheless, it's nice to see that WWE has at least done something to resolve the problem that is having the Raw Women's Championship on Friday Night Smackdown. But now that that's been taken care of, I don't, really, I don't really care too much for the uh, design of this belt. It, I mean, could they not have done? something different it looks exactly like the new title that reigns just got um also what made the segment even more of a dud was the um was the return of charlotte flair and basically putting her in a title match against oscar there is no reason for us for WWE to go back to this feud that's it's just lazy um but since you're going back to it oscar has to win um the central story of the show was Jay's plight, but everything around it was mid at best. Oscar style unveil mid. Money in the bank from qualify matches mid. So as I said too, right, like maybe let's not like again blood out story is great, but let's try to make time for everything else. And with that we'll go and wrap up this episode of the discussion. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit that like button down below.